Hey, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com and also my new website, healingsuicide.com. Yes, you heard that right, healingsuicide.com. Um, and uh, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and also a channel and an energy worker. And um, this video is about a Chiron, natal Chiron in Aquarius. And uh, I will put the dates uh, for Chiron and Aquarius, uh, the most recent one, uh, in the description of the video so you can, um, you, so you can see that. Um, check out the Chiron overview video that I did a few months ago and also the um, Chiron and energy management video. Those two things explain my unique approach to Chiron as an energy antenna. In my view of it, uh, we have to get beyond wounded and wounded healer. And for me, wounding and healing are byproducts of being sensitive to energy and emotion. So I, I look at Chiron as sensitizing us. And those other two videos, you know, maybe 35, 38 minute time investment, it'll really help you understand what I do uh, with Chiron. And all of the uh, natal house videos are up on YouTube. And uh, uh, Aries, Pisces, and Taurus, the other natal placements so far, I'm in, I'm in process with a move and whatever uh, going on this summer. So, so Chiron's an energy antenna. It makes us sensitive to how others respond to us. And Chiron's wounding, in my perspective, begins right after birth with a sense of being rejected. Even if somebody doesn't mean to do that, we have a sense that if we do this thing or we behave in this way, uh, we have a sense that we will not be loved and the safety and support we feel uh, will be taken away. So uh, Aquarius, as a lens of the zodiac, is about freeing yourself and developing independence. So freeing yourself from what confines you or constricts you or hems you in. It is, any planet working through the lens of Aquarius uh, needs to be unique, needs independence, needs to, uh, this is a big thing about Aquarius I've noticed. Um, a planet working through the lens of Aquarius needs to have time alone to clear the decks, to clear the mind, so to find the right rhythm to operate. When you find the right rhythm, your own creativity, your intuition, your flashes of insight uh, can come very strongly, and you can make self-interested decisions that point you toward a future that you want to live in. So with Aquarius, uh, you know, on the face of it, somebody looks a little different or somebody is always out of step with everybody else. Marching to the beat of one's own drummer is that kind of idea with the planet in Aquarius. So Chiron there, you are sensitive to how others react to you when you are original or unique or when you break away from the crowd or you don't fit. So you might, with Chiron and Aquarius natally, you might feel worthy of rejection if you stand out from the crowd. You might fear, uh, and that, that young part of you that might run this part of your life, because uh, we all have these inner infants who are with us regarding Chiron until we really learn how to parent the, those infants in, the, in healthy ways. But that kid may be afraid to stand out from the crowd. Now you might have a strong Uranus, you might have other planets in Aquarius, you might have a loaded 11th house, but if you have Chiron in uh, natally in Aquarius, part of you may be hypersensitive to rejection uh, and be terrified of breaking apart from what everyone else is doing. So in some people, until they mature and grow through the wounding phase, in some people this may look like they're, they'll join anything. You might look at them and say, why are they hanging out with those people? Like, what are they possible? What do they think is happening here? Uh, because they may be afraid to leave a group. They may be afraid to take time and space to, you know, really explore their own individuality. In other words, they may not take the time and space to individuate, which is a very important human maturation process for, for all of us at different points. But part of the Uranian Aquarius archetype is in wanting to belong as well. So you're, so uh, not Uranus and Aquarius, Chiron, sorry, I'm mixing up words, it's Mercury retrograde. Um, Chiron and Aquarius may have somebody hesitant to say what they really think because it's different or express that uniqueness or even do something on his or her own or, or, or to be seen as the person who doesn't want to join in. That's another part of it. When, you, when that planet in Aquarius, whatever it is, finds its rhythm, as I described, the sudden flashes of insight come. 
uh, any planet working through the lens of Aquarius might, to get there, have to find or have to experience quite a lot of sol solitude or feeling like he or she doesn't fit in for some reason. That can be very, very painful. Humans are social animals, of course. And so um, people with Chiron and Aquarius might feel this pull, this nagging pull to spend time alone, but then they might feel so lonely when they do, as if they don't belong. So think about this. A person might need to spend time alone and she knows it, but she's afraid to be seen as a loner or as an individual or somebody who doesn't want to belong. So then if she does take time to be by herself and to figure all this out, she might fear how they see her, how other people see her. People might say, hey, come out after work. And she might say, she might be afraid to say no and, you know, so anyway, so sometimes we get in, the people with this placement can get into this push pull thing where they feel like they need to be around people, but they can't deal with it. And then when they're not around people, they feel like they can't deal with being alone. But in time, this is the key to this in time that unfolds and resolves itself because there's a benefit to being willing to march to the beat of your own drummer. So that's kind of the idea with natal Chiron in Aquarius. Uh, when you move beyond the wound and uh, identifying as worthy of rejection, uh, that's a, a key thing with my Chiron approach. We might feel that we're not worth love or that we are rejectable, worthy of rejection. When we get beyond that, then we can have compassion for the fact that everyone's unique. But in this case with Chiron and Aquarius, uh, this chart holder would take it way too personally and, uh, and make a mountain out of a molehill regarding when he or she doesn't fit or doesn't belong or doesn't want to join in or someone says this isn't the right group for you. You know, it's just navigating this to get to this um, other phase, which is absolute compassion for self and understanding that everybody needs to belong because we're social creatures. We need to know we're like, we need to know we're part of something. Nobody really wants to be isolated. So for more on your own Chiron, get the Chiron natal report at tdjacobs.com. It goes into your natal house and sign placement if it's retrograde, uh, if you're about to have a Chiron return, um, which is around age 50 when the planet returns to its same position. I don't know if everyone watching this knows what a return is. Uh, but like if your Chiron is at, is at two Aries right now, August 2018, you're having a Chiron return because Chiron's at two Aries, so it went 50 years around the cycle. Anyway, uh, also transits and progressions of other planets to your natal Chiron and transits from transiting Chiron to anything in your natal chart. So anyway, it's quite a long report. I, I estimated they'd be like 25, 26 pages. Most are 30, some are 32, 36, and one I did yesterday was 39 pages. So um, it's quite a substantial report. And... Um, uh, gives you different ideas on how to understand this energetic sensitivity and how to open your heart to have compassion. So the chironic part of you, which is very young, formed when you're an infant or shaped, isn't any longer waiting for someone else to validate you. That's part of the chiron maturation process. So like parts of you feel worthy of rejection, well, validate yourself. Anyway, so you can read more on the Chiron Natal Report at tdjacobs.com. And also check out my other site, healingsuicide.com. Take care.